Before I get into today's video, remember to follow me on Twitter. So my Twitter, the link is in the description below. You can also find me. My handle is at Jackson Kruger. Come over, say hi. And anyways, back to your regularly scheduled video. Let's talk about a guy who ended up being kind of a hero in the Super Bowl that I'm not going to lie, I had not heard of. Me, as someone who my job is to cover the NFL, I you know, made two weeks worth of videos previewing this game. At no point did the name Bryson Hopkins ever come into effect in my preview. Now, the reason for this is because, quite frankly, there wasn't many reasons to think about Hopkins unless maybe your immediate family of his. He was inactive during the NFC Championship game. He was only in this game to begin with because there was a Tyler Higbee injury in that NFC Championship game. And then for Hopkins, uh, you know, he was the number two tight end then. He was originally number three. Gets bumped up to number one after Kendall Blanton goes down. He, I did talk about Kendall Blanton, so at least I got that down. And then as a surprise to all of us, I would assume, he ended up having a pretty key impact in this Super Bowl. So let's talk about what he did and how he was able to, you know, play well in this one. So really, it was stuff like this. And quite frankly, with the attention that Cooper Cup is getting, this now means that other guys can, you know, get open against zone coverage, basically, where you see this is Cooper Cup and this is Bryson Hopkins's routes on this uh, play. Obviously, Hopkins is the tight end on this one, so Cup's the one running further and running towards the sideline. And basically, the idea is guys are going to stay deep with Cup, and then you throw underneath, and you can hit Hopkins. And so these kind of routes can really work with tight ends or halfbacks because as a tight end, you you might be blocking, you just don't get the immediate attention that you typically would get uh, if you were a receiver, and it's probably added on when it's like, oh, hey, it's Bryson Hopkins. We don't have to worry about him. However, right when this play begins, what you're going to notice is that, I mean, you see how much attention Cooper Cup gets. And this is very schematic. This is why someone like Hopkins ends up having a big role. This is why I predicted that Kendall Blanton might have a decent role in this game. I did not expect him to get hurt, and then it goes to Hopkins, but it's kind of the same idea. As you see, Stafford's going to make this throw. Hopkins nearly drops it, but then does a really good job uh, after catching it. It seemed like he kind of just wanted to make the catch and then go down. He put both hands on the ball, making sure he doesn't lose it, doesn't fumble it. He wasn't going to be the you know goat of the Super Bowl, as in, you know, in a bad way, the guy who everyone blames for the Super Bowl. He wasn't going to fumble, but he ran with both hands on the ball the whole time, but also picked up some yards. So good stuff from uh, from, you know, the unexpected hero in this Super Bowl. Like, this one's another one. It's gonna, again, you're, you're seeing the play on the screen. Looks eerily similar to the last play. It's basically the exact same play. But again, this is what can work for Hopkins. As you see, Stafford's gonna take the snap. And again, there's just enough separation. And to Hopkins' credit, he's put, putting himself where he should put himself. Like, he is understanding his assignment here. And basically, he was ready for this kind of stuff. And he knew he was gonna be playing in this game. So he knew he was gonna get some of this stuff. But he didn't know he was gonna be the guy, you know, the number one tight end on this play at all. He didn't know that he was gonna get as many. Uh, you know, reps as he did. So the fact that he was ready for this stuff kind of shows, hey, good preparation by Hopkins. And look, once Stafford hits him, he does a great job of turning up field and picking up as many yards as possible. So are these incredible highlight reel level plays? No, but they're solid plays. And I think from what we saw from Hopkins, he certainly just showed that, hey, uh, okay, someone's going to give him a contract somewhere. He's going to get a, ch a shot to get some playing time because of the sm small things he was able to do in this one. And again, the fact that you perform well in a Super Bowl, that's certainly going to, you know, going to make things a little bit better. Also, just a little bit of editing in real time. Uh, Hopkins is still under contract for the next two seasons. But I'm just saying, like, even if he doesn't get any playing time uh, with the Rams because he's blocked with the other tight ends that they like, someone's going to give him some playing time whenever he does become a free agent because of being a Super Bowl performer. And also, let's go to this final drive now where what you're going to see on, you know, a couple of key plays on this drive, first the fourth and one, which is obviously a huge play. If the Rams don't get this fourth and one, they probably do not win the Super Bowl. And it's actually going to be Hopkins's block that's going to have a key impact on this one. He's going up against Sam Hubbard, who that's, this is no slouch. He's not getting to go up and block a safety or anything. No, he's going up against a defensive lineman, a good edge rusher for Cincinnati. However, watch him pull off this block that was towards his direction, and he, he needed to give Cup that much space to make Von Bell miss, and he did exactly that. So that's a really good play from Hopkins. And again, 
in the biggest of spots, this is where the pressure can get to you. And I think a lot of coaches might have been afraid of saying, like, I don't know if I want to run my run this play through a guy who literally had two snaps before week 14 of this season, two career snaps, and, you know, barely played at all over his career. This was the game where he played the most. And also the, you know, bigger spot here, the bigger play that I think that more people would point to is on a third down and two, Bryson Hopkins gets a one-on-one -on -one matchup. And I have to be honest, this was weird defense by Cincinnati. I don't know, like, it seems like, why not play a little bit more aggressive here? Got to press these guys. You you want to get a stop here. You don't want to just accept that they're going to get a first down on third down and two with how far off, uh, you know, you have you know, this separation for Hopkins, like this is, you know, you expect him to be able to make this play. But still, think about the pressure of this situation. Stafford's going to make this throw, passes up Cup to throw to Hopkins, who's a bit more open, but Hopkins makes the grab and turns over and picks up as many yards as possible. The fact that he makes that catch, again, if, if he does this in practice, whatever, you, you should do this in practice. You can He's probably done this a thousand times before. But doing this in the biggest of stages with the Super Bowl on the line as someone who doesn't have a lot of NFL experience, that's where it gets really impressive. And that's where I think that he deserves a lot of praise for being able to kind of come you know, come in off the bench a little bit cold because, yes, he was getting reps just as the backup tight end, but he wasn't the starter, and yet he was still able to come in and perform. So pretty crazy stuff, you know. Uh, he got paid, uh, you know, just a little under a million dollars this year. The Rams will, are certainly glad they gave him that contract. It's just kind of a, a crazy story. You know, he was a fourth-round pick two years ago, kind of just thought of as like, oh, let's take a flyer on Bryson Hopkins, like whatever. Um, you know, maybe we like some of what he can do. Maybe we think he has some slight potential I'm sure never in a million years did they think he was going to have to be a key contributor in the final drive of the Super Bowl I don't know if he thought that that's something he was going to have to do and he rose to the occasion and he was able to be able to perform and do exactly what his team asked of him and quite frankly that's what sports is all about right sure it's about Cooper Cup and Matthew Stafford and Aaron Donald and all the stars coming through and being able to perform well and you know lead the team to a Super Bowl but to some degree it's also just about like these unlikely heroes and doesn't get much more unlikelier than someone who let's be honest how many of us knew Bryson Hopkins and even you know diehard football fans uh, if you knew him you probably knew him because of either you're a Rams fan or because uh, you knew him coming out of the draft like that's what I would assume. But yeah, pretty awesome stuff. And again, that's that's the Super Bowl. You need your star players to perform well. You need your role players to perform well. And usually you need someone who you don't even expect to show up and perform well. That's what the Rams got with Bryson Hopkins. That's what I thought. What did you guys think? What were your thoughts on this unlikely hero? Listen, he, it's not like he's up there with David Tyree in terms of unlikely heroes in the Super Bowl, but it still was, I think, a, 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 an interesting story. So uh, that's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.